The Guild says that, quote, the companies say they have made a major concession by offering to allow six WGA staffers to study limited streaming viewership data for the next three years. So we can return in 2026 to ask once again for a viewership based residual. But in the meantime, no writer can be told by the WGA about how well their project is doing, much less receive a residual based on that data. I think much like AI, this is the studios trying to dive into realizing that they are in a transitory period. They don't have the advertising dollars that are tied to each of these projects yet. They're moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. Netflix with their ad-based tier. Disney with the ad-based tier. Hulu is already mature in that regard. But even all the other ones, you, you throw these in there. They're, they're trying to get a few years under their belt for building advertising revenue to where, script. you and I have talked about this before a number of times, to where there is a measurable aspect to show here's here's revenues and profits for a show based on people that actually watched it this is how many ads that we sold this is the actual physical revenue the operating income that we had for this show based on its performance whereas right now it's 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 kind of out in the ether it's it's like youtube premium revenue you don't know how exactly youtube calculates that they come up with something but they have people that pay you know, premium dollars every month to watch YouTube without ads. And they get they give YouTubers a piece of that each and every month based on, I guess, how much time did that individual user spend in his YouTube month watching your stuff? Exactly. I, so, I mean, there's ways out there to do it. However, of course, with the streaming platforms, unlike Google and YouTube, most of them actually aren't turning any kind of positive operating income. They're all losing money. And that's well, based the on the expenses the primarily. Yeah, based right, on exactly. the expenses primarily, they're losing money and also on the content. Really what this offer here, it's a mirage. It's, it's mm -hmm. hiding the fact that you and I both know, which is that, oh, if you're going into an ad-based model, great. We already have one. It's called network. It's yep. called cable. Yeah, Script, you and I have talked about that many times that we knew that was kind of the end game for streaming all along. Yeah. It was going to be, mm -hmm. it's just gonna be ad based pretty, pretty much and It'll everything that based with that higher tier that yeah. says no ads for the people that are, can't tolerate it however in recent studies people have said oh wait no i like commercials because it actually shows me things that i otherwise can't find myself i don't have to rely on facebook pushing ads for me that are uh, specifically targeted to what i have searched before it's like oh i missed the random commercial of something new that i never even thought of i would like before that doesn't look like something I maybe discussed with my spouse that Alexa picked up or anything of that nature. They liked the idea of the randomized ads and also the commercial right. ads for other shows that they otherwise may never have heard of. It's remarkable that in the last six weeks, people have discovered a show that had been on for eight years called Suits yeah. for the first mm. time. Why? Because they, they already cut cable and they're looking at streaming services and, and watching stuff without ads primarily mm. and they never knew that that show existed until now well and right. you know there's something to be said for proper marketing i mean again you you just mentioned that there are obviously people that come across commercials say oh wow i, I didn't even know something like that existed well you're not going to find that in a targeted ad you're not going to mm. find that and that's that was the wonderful thing about i think a lot of people are discovering that we had it a little bit better before <laughs> maybe maybe we should go back to that so well and alternatively right. like the other thing that script and i always talked about is it it breeds an incentive for better stuff and for oh, the yeah. stuff that is good and people are watching for those things and the actors and creatives involved to be um rewarded right like because that's the thing is it used to be a, you get a hit show like friends or what what have you big bang theory or er yeah, yeah. or whatever the office i think script was about to say yep when when those shows get to their second third season that's you know when the popularity hits that's when the people that are involved with the show get to you know benefit from making a hit show because nobody knows if a show is going to be a hit going it's just like a movie you know you go into it a lot of people are putting a lot of work and money and and time and effort and once you get to those seasons that's when you know, the people involved get to benefit from those in the audience. That's where television and, you know, the audience, there was a cyclical thing with them is like, okay, we watch what you 
what you put out there will will tell you what we like by watching said thing and buying the products that are on the advertisements. It works for everybody. Streaming has done nothing but put a wedge between all three of those things, right? Like between the the the, the customer, the the advertiser, and, and the creatives, right? Who are creating this stuff. So like, right. th- there's no more synergy there like there used to be with network television. I mean, network st- television still around but we've now reached the point where what culture it's 52 percent of all television is now consumed through streaming and most of which you're on wa- right watching right now youtube or whatever it is something to that effect i think it's 48 is on streaming and 52 is still network or over the air okay it's I, very close it's like almost, i, I it's think it just flipped in the last few weeks i was just gonna say script i think it did flip that was what i why i brought recently, it up. i could be cool. wrong yeah, yeah. yeah. again there we go it's a neck and neck race right now yeah, and funnily enough, even on the streaming side, with people with connected devices like TVs and set-top boxes, an overwhelming 70% of those folks are on YouTube regularly on those yeah. on those things. It's pretty crazy. And, and I'll say, too, that I think, uh, you know, if you have any sense, and, and maybe someone has a counter-argument that would, you know, uh, blow me away on this, but it seems to me just very commonsensical that we would all want to have access to the numbers for, you know, streaming viewership. I think that transparency in the market is so important for a number of reasons, not the least of which is investment. But uh, so I, I think I think most people are probably on the side of the guilds when it comes to this, because outside of the box office, we are so blind now. And that's been through manipulation of things like Rotten Tomatoes and other score aggregators. But, you know, beyond that, we have no idea of how how many people are viewing any given entity on all of these streaming services if the market moves in that direction we're all going to be blind and that makes us blind not only to you know the success or failure of a show but it also makes us blind to what is hitting culturally as a zeitgeist or uh where society is moving in terms of entertainment so we we desperately need that i think absolutely and the reason being i one of the reasons i suspect and i'm not the only writer to to postulate this idea is that what if the reason we're not getting those those numbers for those current shows, at least, is because the majority of people streaming are watching old library shows like we know that's a fact when it comes to The Office and Friends. Um, what if that's also the case on Disney Plus? What if there's a whole bunch of old Disney Plus shows or Disney shows that are on Disney Plus or movies that are being watched more frequently than any of the newer content that's out there? What if that same thing is happening on Max and Paramount Plus, and especially with Netflix, given the fact that they have a still ex- an extensive back, uh, catalog uh, of television shows that have not returned to their parent companies? Um, if those numbers are performing better than the current ones, then that means that that advertised based model would actually have to reflect on those who worked on it creatively, the writers, the actors, directors, etc. Um, and if they're making more money on the older show, excuse me, on the older shows and not the newer shows, then that embarrasses the executives that have greenlit those newer shows. So it compromises their position and their quality uh, assessment of what well, should be made and what isn't being made. I, I think you hit the nail squarely on the head as usual script because I think that that's exactly what's happening. I, I think you can go through a an entire cadre of older shows that are that are garnering the most attention by the people that have these streaming services. I know often, you know, people will go and watch Friends. They'll go watch, as you suggest, they'll go watch Suits, which, as you pointed out, has been gone off television for a bit. They'll go watch um, Hulu. Shoot. Hulu has a lot of it. Yeah. Why do you think it's so successful as a, as a streaming platform? <laughs> yeah, and that's, and that's I guess, the problem, right? Nobody wants to watch the new stuff, and you're right. It would embarrass the people at the top who have given the green light to the neo-Marxist stuff that we're flooded with all the time. And it's, it, I mean, I can go through 100 shows, um, How I Met Your Mother, MASH, uh, a bunch of stuff. That, Barney that, Miller. Barney Cheers. Miller. Seinfeld. We just oh, took God. over the show. This is amazing. 